Yes, blue. Uh, both of you are awesome blue and uh, looking awesome and awesome blue. <laughs> coordinated just for you, Vidya. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. And I, I and of course, um, there's you live in a, you live in a palace. <laughs> in my mind, the palace of joy, right? So I, sorry, sorry, guy three. No, uh, it's just very kind of you to say, Vidya. I think <laughs> a home is only about the people, right? So and and the art and the art. Yes, and and you know, um, I I know what I'm going to do. I will just. Uh, I want you to be comfortable and just feel free to walk me into walk us into your home, and sure. uh, we will take it from there. Yes, please. Sure. Please come in. Thank um, you. Before we come in, though, I w was wanting uh, as Vidya, I have uh, introduced us. I'm Gayatri. This is my husband Steve, and uh, collectors feel like a very grand title. I think we're just people who love art. We love the company of artists curators like Vidya, it's a very enriching experience. Um, this is a piece that we're particularly proud of that actually oh, greets yes. people as they come into our home. It is um, a sculpture done by Nyana, which we collected a couple of years ago and has a pride of place. And, you know, we, uh, it, it's just an interesting dynamic for people to, to see um, kind of how the household is, is um, set up. Uh, beautiful, and beautiful. Uh, if I could just uh, show you as well, this piece was actually the first Indian artist to win the award at uh, the Re the Red Dot Award. So, oh, um, okay, wow. Yeah, it's a little bit worse for wear, and it actually came in three. So it's supposed to form sort of a spine or an S, but uh, we took uh, only one. But yeah, we're extremely proud to have both of these oh, yes. pieces actually. Uh, it, it, uh, Beautiful, it's beautiful. Well, I, okay, can I also request you to introduce uh, the, the handsome guy yeah. there, uh, you know, using the phone somewhere in the middle? Yes, <laughs> our, our nine year old uh, Charon, who yes. is um, helping us actually. Uh, who has grown up, for family who's grown up so much. <laughs> Hi, so, good to um, see you. After so many years, yeah. Few years, yeah. Anyway, yes. Uh, now we have entered your your um, domain, and please let us know uh, what, what would you like to share with us. And before that, would you like to take questions from me as you walk around, or would you like to do it separately, Gayatri and Steve? Uh, absolutely, Vidya. Whatever you think that we should be doing. Uh, I okay. noticed actually the first piece that we want to show you when we were. Uh, when, when it came in, is a piece that we also got through Yanni Art, uh, okay. through, uh, from an artist that we had, who was one of the first artists we collected, who's on the call today, Sivaraja Nagarajan, and this was uh, the uh, first uh. that we have here. And uh, there are other pieces from Siva that we'll show you a, a little bit later on. Vidya, okay. feel free to start your questions anytime you like. Okay, actually my questions are, my questions are going to be very simple, uh, Gayatri, for both you see, uh, I'm going to uh, request both of you to answer this because uh, even though you are a couple, I know you have your own individual journeys as well when it comes to life experiences and collecting. So I, I would like uh, both of you to answer this. I mean, what took you, what, what brought you into this world of collecting art or collecting um, beautiful, beautiful things, things that matter to you, things that give you aesthetic joy? Um, I think from my point of view, I always enjoyed um, drawing and sketching and things when I was, when I was young. I wasn't particularly good at it. Um, I certainly couldn't paint. So I think I always had an interest in that from, from a young age. And certainly with painting, you know, we'd always have a, you know, a huge amount of respect for, you know, for anyone who can, who can do it in, you know, in, in such an amazing way. So it's, it's a real sort of, you know, honor to, to have these pieces, you know, hanging on a wall. And it just, it, it just, you know, makes the home, I think, and, you know, every time, you know, there's a lot of pieces, every time you walk past, you maybe notice something different, something you didn't see before. So it's almost like this would grow with you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that the actual proper buying of art started because, like, quite a few collectors who were not the only ones who were just being novices at it. It started from also just, you know, having wall space and wanting to put up something that you could keep looking at. 
But um, I very much knew that probably from before we started collecting what um, genre I wanted to go into, and that was actually thanks to Siva. Uh, we had an event at Siva's beautiful gallery in Kuala Lumpur just yes. over 10 years ago. And there I saw the pieces that he had done um, showcasing Odissi dancers. And Odissi is an, an art form, a dance form that has actually just been completely dazzling to me my entire life. Thanks uh, to Siva and the people in Malaysia who have actually done a brilliant job of catapulting it um, on a global level and also giving us awareness growing up in Malaysia of Odissi. And so I, when I, I was just completely bewitched when I saw Siva's paintings of Odissi dancers. But at that point in time, it wasn't when we could start collecting just yet. Um, so it took us a couple of years after that. By then, most of Siva's work had gone. We managed to get a few of the remaining pieces. And probably that's how we started. Um, this was one of the first pieces we started, along with Siva's Odissi yeah, and this was actually, again, thanks to Siva um, uh, and uh, Ramli Ibrahim, who's a, a very acclaimed uh, yes, yes. dancer. They commissioned a group of artists in Malaysia to paint the Odyssey dancers with Sutra Dance Company. And so this young lady, Radhika, is one of the dance with them. Yes, Radhika. And the artist here was commissioned by, by, by Sutra, by Ramli and Siva. Um, he is of Javanese extraction growing up in East Malaysia and Borneo or by the Utomo Rajput. And this piece of Radhika, and one more we will show you in a little bit, was the last two pieces we had in that series. So we okay. were very lucky. Um, I went to Malaysia, spent a day with Siva at his gallery, went to Bali's gallery, and that's where the relationship uh, has developed, especially with Siva. Count as a dear friend, and I've been waiting for him to come and visit us. Um, yes. But yes, so that's, that's, that's you know, awesome. one of the pieces that we've Beautiful, from. beautiful piece, yes, indeed. Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, Steve, this is uh, um, your, your personal selection. Uh, yeah, this is one that I chose. So, this is um, uh, another friend of ours, um, who's an Arabian artist called uh, Ali Ismanipur. And this is part of a series he did, which is called the Immigrant Series. Okay. So, you know, you can see, uh, you know, for instance, here, you know, there's a Tehran departure stamp, this okay. you know, Australian immigration stamp. So it's, it's all about the themes of what um, immigrants go through and experiences, mm -hmm. you know, obviously in different countries. There's obviously references to American, you know, to the pop culture, you know, right. Minnie Mouse, Batman and Robin. and But, mm -hmm. and also, I think the, 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 there's, a, there's a lot going on with the, the, the placing of the people in the, in the picture. And it's just, it's just got so much depth to it. And I think it's, it's really cool the way he's boxed it in Perspex as well. It really sort of sets it off. And one yeah. of the reasons that I wanted to place it here as well, because this is actually just like a corridor between uh, our foyer and our living room. So we don't actually, you know, you don't spend time here. So that, the idea was that it's something that's constantly moving and people are traveling. So that's why I wanted to place here. Oh, wow, that's a so, beautiful curatorial we, perspective. Yeah, we've got a few other pieces by Ali, which are, see, he's got a lot of sort of breadth to his work, so there's some other cool stuff that he's got, um, which we'll, we'll show you in a little while. Yeah. But I must admit, you know, uh, Steve, it, it, takes, uh, it takes guts to actually want to collect something like this. It's not the typical pretty thing that someone would like to have in their home, especially in the, uh, closer to the entrance, uh, uh, aspect and and then um, and also, also sat satirical and uh, it, it pretty much explains a little bit about you as well, doesn't it, uh, Steve? Yeah, well, I think it's just the you know it's the perfect sort of Beauty and the Beast, right? So it's no, not quite. <laughs> but I think to answer your question a little bit, Divya, I think that yeah. when you first start sort of you know again like collecting, so it sounds so grand, but when you first start collecting, you probably gravitate towards pieces that are. Uh, uh, easier to appreciate the aesthetics. And then I think then you become braver and bolder in your choices. Certainly for me, I think, you know, where yeah, you're yeah. willing to actually just push the envelope a little bit rather than stick to what is just, you know, uh, the piece of uh, Radhika just, you know, still gives us so much joy and happiness. 
but yeah. it's an aesthetically, it's an easy to understand piece. You know yes. what I mean? Because yes, it yes. Just, Relatively, uh, yes. Yeah. And we've had um, uh, two shows for Ali at home. So we, again, he's a close friend. Okay, guys, yes. And these three panels are by Nyana, yes. uh, which he had at the Affordable Art Fair. I think that there's no one that saw this that wasn't captivated by it. And I think that this was a couple of years ago, and I was just really uh, fascinated by Nyana's bravery as an artist. I think he really was uh, questioning to me the beauty aesthetic here. You know what women have to act in terms of a norm and a very narrow stereotype of what is considered beautiful. I, you know, really to me, this was um, pushing a lot of barriers and actually just trying to make the beauty aesthetic a far more all encompassing one. Yes, uh, yes. Of course, the, the texture of it is also really uh, enriching and and I think that how he situates the context of Singapore using and Malaysia using you know, the batik material here. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, if you can see, you can see how Nyana has worked this, you know, with yeah. the lips and all that. It's just, it really, you know, um, comes out at you. And you really find yourself thinking, you know, as, um, as a feminist, as somebody who wants to actually widen the idea of what the beauty aesthetic is. He's just done a really good job of it. And, and, and just from a, a color perspective, it's just, you know, a very, very joyful mix. So prompts great thought, but then also, you know, I think a great amount of, of satisfaction and happiness for anyone looking at it. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, speaking of, um, speaking of your excellent, your, your, the, the, um, the essence that you have uh, gained out of this, um, this, the concept of these paintings, I would like to touch on the fact that you are indeed um, an activist whom I admire personally. So you believe in certain, you have certain uh, principal core values um, uh, as, as, a, as someone who believes in human rights in various facets. So what you spoke about a while, a while ago is something that you truly believe in, right? Uh, the, the issue of color. I know, and could you just elaborate a little bit on the work that you do with regards to this, please, uh, Gayatri? Well, uh, Vidya, again, you're so generous. But I think that, you know, uh, I, um, I do feel, you know, that as um, a woman from South Asia and the beauty values that have been imposed on us are just so crippling and I've actually done so much damage to how we view ourselves. Yes. Not just as women or young girls growing up, but also in terms of society. And um, I think that if you were talking about the issue of color a uh, uh, couple of months ago before all of us started um, having to just sort of be at home, uh, I actually wanted to showcase a, um, a young lady from Malaysia called Tulasi Sophia who started a wonderful Facebook group called Dear Indian Girls, where we talk about, as South Asian women, our you know, different trials, tribulations, and predicaments. And one thing that she highlighted, which really resounded with me, was the issue of colorism and yeah. how that came to be. So uh, I invited Tulisa to Singapore, and she and I had um, a discussion on this. Uh, at, um, and we had a really good response from people, because I think it's, a conversation that people are afraid to have. They don't really want to broach it. Um, and so I think that it was for us, we got as much out of the audience as they did, I, hopefully that they got from us because it felt like a safe space where people can talk about these different experiences, right. whether they were from London or the US or you know from the Caribbean. And then we shared the context of what colorism meant, how it was rooted in you know, um, colonization, Christianity, you know, all of that. So that was uh, that was a that was a, a meaningful conversation to have. And also because I have so many South Asian girlfriends here in Singapore whose kids are in different schools, and their daughters are feeling very much like they are not part of what the narrative is of what beauty yes. looks like, either because of hair or skin color in particular. And you know, we need to just change 
this discourse. It's very important for us to do that, which is why, you know, going back to Diana's piece, this is really about changing the discourse. It is about questioning because these three figures here are to be exceptionally beautiful women. Do they fit the normal, you know, straight and narrow concept of what beauty is? No, but we need to change that. So Liana did, you know, a very brave thing and it's really good to have, um, you know, in, in, this, in this whole uh, struggle, men who are part of it and who are showing yeah. it solidarity through art or music or, you know, even uh, conversation. So, yeah, thank you very much for this, Liana. Thank you. You know, this reminds, you mentioned an important point, you know, um, Gayatri, because uh, not all feminists are women. And it doesn't mean yes. that if, if you're a man, you're not a fa you can't be a feminist. You get what I mean? Like my my dad is a feminist. Yes. So, uh, so it's an important point. You know, we need more men like this uh, around us. <laughs> and it yeah. also depends on what feminism means to each person, too, right, Gayatri? I mean, absolutely. Um, There's no singular definition. I think it, there really isn't. And I think that you know the definition of what it is in the West versus what we go through here. In, in Singapore versus what's happening in, in India, in Sri Lanka, in Nepal. So I think that it's, it's, a very, uh, it's, it's a very broad definition. I think one that we have to keep working on to suit uh, the relevance to our community and society. And so, you know, and I think Yana did that very well here because there's a strong element of what he sees in Singapore. You see the batik print is very reminiscent of uh, the this Singapore Airlines yes. outfit, yeah. you know, and so I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it, um, contextually, it actually fits very much where Nyana is based, also his heritage to me. I'm speaking for you, Nyana, analyzing the artist through his art, yeah. but yes, I think that, yeah, it, it is a, a very, a, it just, it, it's reminiscent of all of the, the composition of Nyana's life and his life experiences. So, yeah. Beautiful. Really thank you so much, Gayatri. And Steve, thanks for uh, being there and supporting Gayatri silently when she's uh, speaking about her pursuit. No problems at all. <laughs> yes, uh, Steve, please. Uh, Steve and Gayatri, please uh, continue uh, with your journey. Yeah, so um, this, uh, this piece is a, it's a, a bit of a, I would say a bit of a departure for us because okay. I think I don't really think either of us has been sort of interested in abstract art before. Um, okay. This is a, a piece done by a very good friend of ours, Carlos, who um, right. uh, is basically, he's, he's an architect by trade, but has now um, uh, stopped doing that uh, to become a full-time artist. And right. I've just been really sort of blown away by some of his creativity, well, actually all of his creativity, his ideas, and the, uh, a lot of the textures, the materials he's using, and you can, I don't know how well it really shows up, but you know, there's, right. there's like a real 3D element to all of his work. And yes, the, you know, their, yes. inst their, their installations, you know, he does his own framing and everything. Um, I mean, this is actually probably one of his smaller pieces almost because he, yeah, from his first collection, and he's got some just amazing ideas. And, it's, and because, you know, we, we see him all the time and, you know, we have a look at his, you know, his, sort of his art workshop and stuff, just seeing, you know, his art, his ideas of all its, uh, it's, it's, it's really, really nice to, to see that. Um, so to say, we were, uh, we were very, very happy to, uh, to snap this piece out from this, uh, this first question. Actually, I feel, I feel a very strong sense of movement there. Uh, do, you, do, you, do you feel that, Steve? Yeah, so I think this one, if I recall, he said, was sort of inspired, I think, by um, the oceans, I think. And so that sort of feeling of maybe the tides mm. moving and okay. moving the water. So this was from uh, so his first collection. The, the latest collection is... He, he just completed, there was a lot of things centered around forests and woods and things. So okay. he picks up a theme and stuff and um, he started to develop you know, uh, these, these ideas as he goes forward. So, but um, okay. yeah, no, we've been very, very happy with this. Lovely, lovely, it is indeed. This is the, the second Bayou Tomo piece uh, of Radhika. Okay. So, uh -huh. um, this one is uh, this one is rather uh, exciting because you can see that she's not just sort of smiling, and then her eyes are probably what's saying much more than anything else. And the hand gesture here, mm -hmm. so really lovely. I think that Bayou was very cleverly when I asked him 
uh, I was choosing between the two. And then Bayou said, just take both. And so, uh, um, <laughs> That's what, that's what so why, why is advice? Why is advice? <laughs> why is it wise to take both? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. of course, of course. Why not? Why not? Exactly. I think that, you know, we were lucky enough to be able to take both. I think that they were last in a series. Um, and then he said to me, just take both and sell one link. You don't want it. And that's not anything that we even would have imagined or would imagine to do. I think, you know, these pieces are very personal to us, so, you know. Um, I, I can imagine. Yeah. That's a lot of character. Yes. You know? Yes. And, um, fearlessness, you know, absolute fearlessness. That's what I see. Yes. And it's, I think that he's really managed to capture the intensity in the eyes in particular. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. And um, uh, really interestingly is through uh, Niana and uh, Siva and their collaboration together also, we find out that Radhika's father-in-law is an artist as well and we have two pieces of his which we will oh, show you okay. in a little bit too. So Ellen Go. Um, this, this is a piece by an um, artist in India called Bharti. I think that Bharti is based in Bangalore and uh, she's actually a lecturer of art and um, she was showcased at the Singapore Art Fair by a gallery that came from India and it was just, I think that for me, I, I, I think uh, maybe, you know, I'm being uh, dreadfully biased but I think that, you know, the South Asian woman is, is something that I really want to celebrate in, in my, in, 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 on my walls and everywhere that I can possibly be. So, so I, I tend to always look at the female form, the South Asian female form, or in this case, also the um, I can see you want to talk about these two pieces that we, took, uh, that we got from South Africa. And again, you know, women that, that yeah. we want to celebrate. So, yes. Yeah, we were, we were just at the end of our, uh, our holiday in South Africa. Oh. 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 Shop, which is a lot of gallery Teach and things, so we, we just sort of stumbled across these two. We were just okay, great, thank you. In particular. And, and we did what, what you suggested, you know, we were sort of deciding to bring one and we just took both. Um, Good idea. Well, yeah. I, <laughs> I think if I remember correctly, the guy was saying the, the artist is actually a white South African lady, but she's you know very focused on the power of, um, you know, uh, basically. You know, Black South African, Black South African you yeah. know, ladies, and you know, the, because if you look at them, they're obviously two very, very uh, beautiful women, but they also look extremely, you know, they're yes. very powerful symbols. So I think that you know she's managed to capture that very well, and I think it fits in with the theme that you know guys was trying to be, you know, be creating around yeah. you know, a lot of the arts. The artist here, uh, Vidya, and she had actually been studying Black South African women and the trials and tribulations that they go through from the time, you know, during apartheid and after, and how they hold up a whole family, they, you know, do whatever they can to get their children educated. And so hers actually was a celebration of the strength of uh, Black South African women. And each of them has a name, and if I'm not mis mistaken, these are Zulu names, and are actually meant to signify hope, strength, and it's again part of the series that, she, that this lady did. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. It's absolutely insightful and it's historical. I think they're quite monumental. Actually, yeah. excellent choices, ex excellent informed choices that you have made. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, to show you Mr. Elon Moore's thesis that we got through uh, Diana as well. Um, okay. There's one. Oh, okay, wow. This is um, Karagatam. Ka that's a Karagam on her head. Karagam dancer. Yes. Yeah, you can tell us more about Indeed. it. Yeah. Indeed. Karagam, where they actually uh, carry um, a decorated pot on their head and they dance yes. uh, during 
village festivals uh, and so on and so forth and it's a beautiful depiction you know that it's it's uh, the sense of movement the dance ecstasy beautiful well done uh, well good choice once again <laughs> And this is the other piece, uh, also from Mr. Ellen Gold. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Working women. Yes. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hats off to all sorts of working women, isn't it, Gayatri? Yeah. Women who are always working, seem to be very uh, strong about working towards change. You know, yeah. for, um, one thing that's also been uh, really great is the relationship that we have with artists. You know, time spent with them is really very significant. So, um, yes. this is an artist, probably Malaysia's, you know, one of uh, uh, Malaysia's most prolific artists, Ahmad okay. Zaki Anwar, who's very known for his charcoal. And this is in the tradition of uh, men from South India, South Indian Muslim men who came to Malaysia many moons ago and then the tradition of the Tetarik, the tea, the mm. poon tea has become the tradition here and we put um, Tetarik Boss, that's his name, uh, okay. Tetarik Boss, okay. and his mind first immigrants because again, you know, his, the culture that was brought, uh, the nature of him moving to Malaya, Singapore, Malaya, right. uh, Malaysia, Singapore was one of an immigrant uh, um, tradition. So, yeah, very familiar figure for those of us who grew up in this region and probably yes. even, you know, because it comes from South Asia, so a tradition from the Indian subcontinent, but yeah, one that's come. But what's really cool about this piece as well is that depending on how far you, you stand from it, you get very, very different things depending where you are. And I mean, obviously we're in natural light at the moment, but at nighttime when it has like uh, light shining on it as well, it, it, it can give you all sorts of different things as well. So it's such a cool piece, just, you know, depending where you are, you just get so many different, uh, different things from it. And yeah, you're completely right. The cultural element, because given that all the artists and his wife, uh, their personal friends of ours and, you know, and um, the, all of these in this collection and this series have been, um, have been actually taken by different heritage boards in Malaysia. Mm. So this is the last one. So yeah, I mean, uh, you're right. The way that he does it, it's very evocative. He's standing here in the living room with us, I think. And, um, this is just a bit of a touch of whimsy. Uh, it's an Israeli sculpture that I discovered during the Affordable Art Fair. And I just like the little gender play here where mm. the girl is the one flying in to plant a kiss. Another symbol of uh, and you know, the young lad is the one just sitting here on the bench. And it's, it's interesting because she's an Israeli artist called Ruth Block. And given the fact that Israel, because of the whole situation with Palestine, there's constant conflict, it's always in the news. I think it was, it was really interesting that she could take a departure from that and give us a little bit touch of, you know, romance and whimsy um, in her mind. So, yeah. Uh, it's a bit of sweetness as well, yes. you know. Very, very um, heart-wrenching. If you look at this one, this is the other Bharti piece, the main Bharti piece that, mm. that we have. So Bharti, as I said, is the lecturer in fine arts in, in, fine art in India. And uh, her, the, work, the intricate work that she's done on all how the sari, the print, is just really quite marvelous. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And also her depiction, that elongated neck and her depiction of all of the, the you know, the silhouette, the female silhouette is really, it really challenges a lot of things. And of course, they all have a nose stand, which I'm part of too. So. Yes, the, the ornamentation is amazing as well. Yes. So this is, um, this is really great. Um, and but we what, never had what, a chance to meet Bharti. Uh, Gayatri, what drew you into, uh, what, what, what motivated you into collecting this painting? What was it that, uh, you know, uh, struck a chord? You know, uh, Vidya, I think I'm quite, a, quite simple as a collector by choice. I think if there is going to be 
a silhouette of a South Asian woman, I'm naturally going to spend uh -huh. a lot of time looking at it. Yes, I thought yes. it was like a celebration. And then also this is a collective of how we work, women do work together so brilliantly. And I think that, you know, it was a collective of women coming together. And it seems that each individual figure has a statement to make, but then they also exist very quietly in unison with one another. So I think that, mm, you know, yes. it to me is, uh, it was again a testament for strength and power of women to be individual, but then also to work harmoniously as a collective much like the other Bharati as well, you know? Right, right. Yeah. So you do have a personal collection policy. In other words, Gayatri, um, is, isn't that so? I mean, something within you, that's, uh, I think we all have it, but then now I'm understanding it more, having had, had I, this uh, tour. I think uh, my culture and the women of my culture are very important to me. So I think that that's probably what is a driving factor. The, you yes. know, um, yes. and so that that has sort of started the geographical area of what I want to collect and who I want to collect, and and and, and then you know, of course, you know, we made a little bit of a foray into African artists, but that's another uh, area that you know we both would like to look at. Unfortunately, you know, um, it's a little bit difficult because of the you know there isn't as much clarity. Whereas here. We have Miani Arts providing guidance, introducing us to artists. So I think that, that with African art, we don't seem to have that ability because of the geographical situation yes. to have the guidance and the direction. But yeah, that's another area that would be quite important. Um, and then, of course, Ali. Oh, oh, you want to get Ali? Another thing is that Ali's here before we go to another Ali. Um, just also, um, we mentioned the, uh, yeah. the abstract. Um, Piece yes. of my friend Carlos. This is a sort of quite a sort of cool uh, little sort of sculpture he's done. So he's basically mm. taken a vase and then used all sort of materials and colors and right. um, sort of you know reimagined that. He's been doing some really cool things with um, uh, like taking old telephones, uh, books, and things. Guys, he's just bringing over uh, one of his telephones that he's done. Uh, the recontextualization. Yeah, so it's, you know, he, I mean, he's a very, very talented, um, you know, uh, guy and, you know, his imagination is just, just fantastic. Right. So um, it's, it's, it's a really cool idea. It's really yeah. cool ideas. Quite, quite outstanding indeed. And, it, and it's, and it is beautiful. You know, it, it, it's well put together, regardless of the context or the concept, you know. Mm. And it's just, you know, and, and, you know for, for our home, I mean, it's just, it's just nice to just brighten the place up. And, yeah, cool I agree with you. Yes. So, um, so now we're just going to go back to a couple of Ali's pieces. Um, okay. So um, this one is of uh, a series of uh, the, the dervishes. It says it's a really, really beautiful piece. The way he's captured the, the movement and the motion. Mm. My only regret with this piece is that we've just got one of the small ones and not one of the bigger ones. Um, right. and, it, and it also showcases, uh, with, with, as I say, with. Ali's got such diversity in his work, but one of the things I really love about his work is the things he does with the frames and the detail mm -hmm. on the frame. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah there, there's some, some really, really intricate work and you, you can see it on another piece uh, that we have as well. Um, right. So, you know, it's just, the whole piece is just alive and even with the branches and things, you know, mm. it's, just, it's just a really, really nice piece. And just as I say, just showcases just, you know, how multi-talented he is. And this tradition of the dervishes, you know, and the Sufi mystics is so magical. Oh, really yes, is. yes. Magical, yes. I, I must admit, you know, it's enigmatic as well. Something strange, something mysterious, yet beautiful. <laughs> yes, and, and the fact that, you know, that they just, and the, the words of Rumi that they were to is mm. also just, even if you don't understand, it's just transport, just transport you. And Ali has actually captured that beautifully, really beautifully. He has mm -hmm. others that I've seen in friends' homes and the colors of the blue and the greens that he has are just, you've not seen colors like that before. Right. So um, this is another, I think Steve's gonna talk you through. Yeah. So, this, so this is from uh, another Valley series called the uh, Identity Series. Okay. Um, now when I, when I saw this one, I, I sort of just basically felt like I just had to have it because mm -hmm. I'll sort of explain to you, but it's just a really, really you know, great concept. 
Um, I'm not sure how easily you can see, but there are basically fasteners across here and all the way down. Right. So this is actually two pictures in one. So mm. you, you've got the, obviously you can see the main, the, the, the main piece. And then as you can see over the top, you know, you have what appears to be cracked glass. And things, yeah. but this actually lifts off and there's a separate painting here. So um, I'll get Leo to, to, to zoom in a bit. But here there's basically the outline of a man who is um, basically over a lady. So you can see his nose here, his eye, and this is his chin, his shoulders. And this is the lady with nose, her eyes, and you know, so she's lying underneath him like that. So it's actually a, a yes. picture and it's a separate picture in its own right. In its own, um, its own right, yes, I understand, yes, yes. But, but again, you know, it's, there's just so many, you know, themes and things. So this is obviously the immigrant series was the first one, but then there's the, there's, I think it's exploring the concept of identity, you know, you know, when you're living in a country that's not your own and um, okay, so yes, just yes. So, so many things going on. It's, it's a really, really wonderful piece. It's uh, really cool. And there are many layers of uh, context and concept in it, Tim. It's very intense. Yeah, and there's there's so many, um, you know, just, just you know things that you spot and things, you know, you, you know even like the, um, the sort of the Coca Cola sign from you know, the, the mm. Middle East. There, I think this looks like Pennywise the Clown from Stephen King's It. I think there's just there's just so many things in there. Um, really, 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 really. Um, it's just, probably like a cover of a book yeah. here, which says I think the nemesis of probably modern capitalism. Ali's mm. commentary is uh, very, very pronounced, and his yes. ability to work with different media is exceptional. Yeah. I must yeah. admit, because I agree with you. Yeah. Show you actually, we have the artist in residence yeah. for a particular piece, another portrait. The artist okay. in residence. Wow. wow, that's wonderful. So, um, <laughs> the, 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 the parents are on the <laughs> commission on these works, so. Super, very nice. Well done. Good job. That's Anjali. Yes. yes. The actress who is responsible. Um, very quickly, we, very quickly, because we've taken up a lot of time, we'll just show you these two pieces by Ketna Patel. Uh, okay. The first one, uh, the first one, Ketna Patel was based in Singapore before, and then, um, and now. Uh, lives in the UK. The, the first one was studying Indonesia and I didn't know what to get Steve for a first wedding anniversary present so I got him that um, and then we went to Katna's studio and he loved this because Steve loved this because he said it looked like an Indian gone with the wind. So <laughs> we, picked up, uh, yes. we picked up this uh, the one of an uh, interpretation of, of uh, so these are sort of uh, lighter and, and more fun uh, yeah. pieces, but yeah. Beautiful. So, um, quite a range, quite quite a spectrum indeed. Yeah, it's an amazing yeah. collection. You, yeah, we've been going on for a long time, Vidya. We don't want to bore anyone. But then, before before we say bye bye for now, I wanted to touch upon both the efforts and Steve and uh, guys. We both of you. Um, you, you work actively to support um, migrant workers uh, in their daily life uh, difficulties. Could you just uh, share, uh, share just a few words uh, with regards to that? No, well, Vidya, it's actually because, I mean, if you look at, uh, in the context of Singapore, the migrant workers are the most vulnerable of, uh, you know, of our society here. And, you know, in other countries where immigration is a much more free-flowing situation, it would be migrants themselves, uh, immigrants. Um, and so I think um, I became very aware of the plight of migrant workers and immigrants quite early on. And um, then we found an advocacy group here for migrant workers called Transient Workers Count Two. And since then, we've tried to do whatever we can uh, to support Transient Workers Count Two. So um, this situation with them and what's going on currently because of COVID-19 could have entirely, could have been a, in, avoided entirely. I think the conditions, I mean, I, yeah. I, mean, I think, you know, without being at all controversial, I mean, you can see what's going on with this COVID-19 situation, exactly where yeah. they are in the food chain. And, um, 
you know, things need to change. Um, you, you know, they need, you know, much more support. Uh, there needs to be a lot more fairness and, you know, things just, you know, really need to change. Um, how possible that is, I don't know. So in the meantime, you know, I think, um, you know, Guy 3 has uh, really sort of put a weight behind that and, you know, we want to continue to do that. Um, because I think, you know, in, in many ways they are, you know, the forgotten people. So, uh, and, and we couldn't be in the society without them at all. They are responsible for, you know, virtually yes. every part of our daily life. And uh, so I think that, you know, um, like Steve said, it was, this was when you guys came, uh, Vidya, and you had a show here and so kindly agreed to give a percentage of the proceeds, a generous percentage of the proceeds to Transia Workers Count to, it couldn't have been more timely because you know they really need the funding to actually just sustain themselves even those who aren't affected by the disease just to get the top ups on their phone cards just to get their daily amenities so and i hope after this that we don't forget about them again we shouldn't go back into that pattern so yeah thank you for, so much and for I your support like, i must tell you that's not the reason why i why i wanted you to speak about it not for you to mention Nyanyad's collaboration that wasn't no, a publicity uh, thing but then I just truly wanted both of you to talk about it because it's uh, it's an important and noble uh, initiative that you have been uh, doing yeah that's the reason yeah and thank of you for course, mentioning. Vidya. You're, you're too good a friend there are lots of times when you support without it being anything to do with Nyani art so and and actually you and Yana and Siva Ali have kindly really all contributed in any charitable endeavor. We are so grateful. So, and this is a genuine friendship with you guys and Ali with Siva, so, and now Shweta too. So yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Gayatri and uh, Steve. It has been such a pleasure and um, an honor, I must say, you know, and um, I'm not buttering you up because I find it difficult <laughs> to do that, you know? So it's the truth. Uh, I wish to have a lengthier conversation with you on another platform. But for today, lots of love and please take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.